Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. Thank you for joining us here on uh, our, on your Sunday and our Sunday as well. And uh, I want to welcome back to the channel. Uh, we've seen him quite a bit on here. I, you guys have seen me over on his. None other than Guitar Hack himself. What's going on? How much, man? So you had a big, great weekend, it looked like. And uh, yeah, congratulations, man. I wish I could have been there. I, I, gig. Wish, I wish you could have gone as well. It's a, you had a, gig, were, gig. Just a couple people that we, we were missing. And uh, yeah. if we do it again. If we do Fall Fest again or Summer Fest or whatever, we, whenever we decide to do it, uh, we'll make sure. I will, I will definitely you. book that weekend off. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be that definitely cool. So uh, I can't believe awesome. it's been a week since Fall Fest already, but uh, the show must go on here on the YouTube channel. And uh, it is Sunday. Sunday is now ranking the albums day. And we've got a band that we've been talking about doing for quite a long time. And we've had a lot of people ask for them. And today is the day. Black Label Society, of course, the, uh, the band fronted by Mr. Zach Wild, guitarist and vocalist. We also know him from Ozzy Osbourne's band as well. And we've got uh, we've got a pretty lengthy catalog here, eleven albums over the years. Albums. So uh, we're gonna start with number eleven and work our way back to number one. Uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit about each one, but because there is a lot of them, we're not gonna spend too too much time on each one. But uh, and and I have I have probably seventy five percent of the catalog in hard copy, so I'll throw them up when I got them here, uh, if I have them here. So uh, I'll have uh, I'll have Hack kick us off with his number eleven. Well, my number eleven is. Hangover Music, uh, 2004. It's the, um, yeah, it's the uh, Mellow Zach album. Um, you know, it's the, it's just that. It's, uh, I mean, it's it, it's not what I prefer Zach doing. I prefer Zach belting out, you know, a vocal over a really cool riff. And there's some of that on here, but not a lot. Um, Crazy or High is is is, is pretty good, but and I do love, uh, I'm going to probably say this wrong, Tequila. He, he does, um, on a lot of his records, he does like a little shorty instrumental thing, which is really cool. This one is really nice because he's playing some really nice Spanish style guitar on this. There's a cover of Whiter Shade of Pale, which doesn't really cut it for me. There's not really a lot that, gra uh, that honestly grabs me on this record. Um, he's got a lot better mellow songs because he does throw those in on his regular records and they're better songs on other records than this. And I hate to say it, but this record really shows his vocal limitations. I mean, the guy can sing. He's a guitar player that sings, right? You know what I mean? You have guitar players or singers that are singers and guitar players that are singers. And in this case, I, th he's a, I think he's a little overreaching maybe what he should try to to sing but um yeah so for those reasons that ranked as my number 11 yeah it's my number 11 as well and uh interesting how it's called hangover music volume six <laughs> I, I, yeah right it's volume one right but yeah whatever it's his fifth album uh yeah 2004 uh i like parts of it i, I agree with you though i don't want to hear zach doing a mostly moody acoustic album uh I mean, I know he likes mellow music because he throws little ballads and acoustic songs on almost every album. Yeah. But it's just, and yeah, I, you know, I've always had a really hard time with his voice. There are times I really like his vocals because um, I think he can get nice and melodic and emotional, but sometimes his vocals have so much effects on them and it's like, ah, it just sounds like a little too much. Other times, you know, on the big, big heavy shit, it sounds just fine, right? It fits the music pretty well. I mean, I know yeah. lots of other stoner stoner bands who have singers that are way worse than him. So I yeah. I, I tend to I always cut Zach a lot of slack because I really like him as a guitar player and I think his his vocals do fit the music. But you know, there's some decent stuff on here. House of Doom is probably my favorite song on here. Big stoner riffs mixed with acoustic textures. Um, Crazier High is good as well. You mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, Stepping Stone, kind of okay. Ah, there, there's some cool little, like you mentioned, the uh, the little acoustic piece is pretty good. But there's a, a lot of these albums have a lot of songs. There's 15 songs on here. Yeah, it's like way too much. Way I was gonna, much. I yeah, I'm gonna mention that as we go through. But there's a lot of a lot of records that man, if he had shaved off like three or four tunes, it would have been a night much nicer tighter pack. yeah yeah that's that is a problem with a good chunk of these there's just just too much music 
And uh, what's weird too about this album, I think you kind of touched on it. It's like, it is a mostly mellow acoustic album, but he's still singing like you would if there was all this big riffage behind him and it's like a full on metal attack. It's like sometimes, you know, Zach, just tone it down just a little bit, but not try and reach too much because when he tries to really, you know, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to throw down this just beautiful, poetic, emotional vocal passage. Sometimes it's not really what he can do. Right. But I don't know. There's, there's, there's some good stuff on here. There's some really bland stuff on here as well. To me, this is yeah. easily the bottom. You know, it's, uh, but like I said, there are some decent songs on it. But bland, bland is a good word for it. And yeah, you don't want to hear Zach Crooning. I mean, you don't want to hear that. Yeah. 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 All right. Number 10. Uh, so, number 10, um, I got Mafia. Um, it's just too damn long uh you know but there are some you know there are some good things in what's in you i think was a cool song uh death march is good it's probably my favorite song on the record but there's just i just don't have a lot of really good things to say because you know with zach you know zach i mean and listen to his catalog he basically does four things right he does like the you know the the sort of the the really up tempo heavy riffage stuff he does the dirgy sort of sabbathy stuff right then he does the southern rock acoustic guitar thing and then he does the whole piano and strings and because i know he's a big elton john guy and yeah you know you see that going into it and the thing is you know with with the with the heavy riffs you know does a lot of drop d stuff and you know some of those riffs are cool and they're creative and inventive and whatever and then some of it just sounds like here here's a couple here's a riff let's write a song around it and like man it, that there's not enough going on you know it's and it, it gets it gets a little um repetitive you know what i mean so yeah and and there's way better riffs and things on other records so that that's why it ranked as low as it did yeah, more about that in just a couple minutes. Uh, my number 10 is Shot to Hell from 2006, which is his seventh album. First for Roadrunner Records. Um, one of one of their weaker albums, in my opinion. Uh, really, if it wasn't for the Hangover Music album, it would be my last one here. A uh, couple decent songs. Concrete Jungle, catchy, kind of a banger. Black Mass Reverends, got some good groove, good riffs. Give Yourself to Me rocks. Faith is Blind is one of the heavier songs on here. I dig that one. Uh, Devil's Dimes got lots of good riffs. The song's not overly memorable, but the riffs are pretty cool. Uh, way too many ballads on this album. It's like, I think everything that I just mentioned are really the only rocking songs. The rest of it's just really kind of mushy and just kind of like, you know, kind of unmemorable. Um, yeah. I don't know. This this is, this is one of those albums, like 40% of it is pretty decent. The rest of it, I just don't give a shit about. So... That's my number 10. Shot to Hell from 2006. Yeah, yeah. More on that later. Uh, Catacombs is my number nine of the Black Vatican. I love his song, his uh, album titles. Yeah, that's an 20, awesome title. Yeah, 2014. Uh, not a lot of good for me on this. Uh, I love Draw the Flood. I think that's a good record. Otherwise, the riffs and just... Um, I don't know. They're just not as cool and as creative to me. Again, uh, it this one to me sounds almost phoned in, you know. Um, yeah, just bland. Just there's not enough catchy, interesting stuff that kind of grabs you, uh, at least grab me anyway. So, um, yeah, that's that's my number nine. My number nine is Mafia. from 2005. You know, again, Mafia comes after Hangover Music, so it's kind of back to Black Label Society Basics, um, but it's very uneven, very uneven. Yeah. Uh, it's solid, not one of their better efforts. Fire it up, kind of plotting, but still pretty crunchy. Uh, What's in You, I like, it's a strong uh, song. Uh, my favorite song is probably Suicide Messiah. That's a good that's a good one. Kind of stoner anthem. I dig that one quite a bit. I wish the rest of the, uh, the album was like that. Um, I love his guitar solo in the really mellow piano piece, The River. I mean, The River, he now turns into his big, like, ballad moment uh, of the live shows. And uh, that guitar solo is just absolutely amazing on there. Death March is another good one. Electric Hellfire is good. But, you know, the rest of it's just kind of like, it's okay. It's yeah. nothing. I, I totally agree. With I think he, 
he went there was like this kind of like mid period that just the band just seemed to be kind of like going, going through the motion and right? they lost their way a little bit yeah I, I find like the for me as you'll see with my ranking the early part of the catalog and the real latter part of the catalog seems to be the strongest for me and the mid period just kind of like <laughs> it's just kind of like i don't know meandering a little bit for whatever reason uh, we're going to be pretty similar then. Because <laughs> I found the same thing. It's like, what? yeah, because all my, like, this is all mid period stuff that, yeah. You know, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, now I number eight, and you mentioned it earlier Shot to Hell, um, 2006. Uh, it, I mean, there's some really cool moments on that. Uh, you know, Concrete Jungle, Black Mass Reverend. I love that tune. New Religion is great. Love the slow build, you know. So that's, you know, slow build. That's something different. You know, I like that. You know, I want to hear different, you know. Uh, Blood is Thicker Than Water. It's uh, one of their better, mellower tunes. I mean, I'm not going to say all his mellow songs are crap. I mean, there are some there are some really nice ones, and that, that, that's one of the better ones. Um, if Of their lower-ranked albums for me, you know, meaning from, like, eight downwards, this is obviously the best Um definitely had some moments lead me to your door i quite like also um you know you could i mean for me if you took my my eight through 11 you could make one really good album oh sure uh, yeah 100 percent. yep yeah you just like you know cherry picked the best songs of each that would have made it you can have a, a really really strong 12 song album out of all the best from those albums i agree 100 yeah. percent. yep you know, that, and which again is that goes back to what you were just saying, the sort of their mid period, you know, yeah. one good album out of that. And uh, because like you say, it's just they're, you know, they're, they're uneven. I mean, there's, there's some really, there's, you know, they'll have a few good songs and then the rest are like, uh, you know, just kind of, okay, I kind of heard that one before. And I heard this kind of blend, they don't really grab you. So, the, yeah. and I, you know, and I, and I, and I unfortunately, um, you know, because he does play like the four styles I mentioned earlier, you know you, you've you've heard it before you know and it, it just it yeah a little bit of your fatigue sets in right so yeah yeah my number eight is catacombs of the black vatican uh ninth album you know it's a pretty moody album it's uh not quite as big and bombastic as the album that came right before it which i will be talking about uh, a little bit later but there are some good songs on here. Uh, I, I like the ballad on here, Angel of Mercy. I think that's really well done. Uh, Heart of Darkness rocks. Um, Fields of Unforgiveness and Believe are dark, kind of bluesy, raunchy. Less heavy, but still pretty potent. Uh, Beyond the Down, Cranks. Uh, sounds really Southern Rocky on that song, especially his vocals. You know, when he wants to, he can kind of do that Southern rock drawl type of thing. Yeah. Damn the Flood's got a really good riff, good groove. Um, probably my favorite song on the album. It's kind of inconsistent. It's got some, like, we, like we've been saying, every one of these albums we've mentioned so far have some really good tracks and have some stuff that's just really average. And uh, yeah, like, like we've heard, like it's regurgitated stuff that we've already heard before. But what's good is really good. And, you know, a lot of great guitar solos on all these albums too because he always oh yeah goes up to to 11 you know yeah exactly yeah no i get <laughs> he's a killer player for sure he is yeah i think for me everything going forward is really strong i think the the, the bottom few that we've already mentioned i think are the yeah. inconsistent albums for me everything that's going to come now are really good for me anyway yeah well on that note uh my number seven is the debut sonic brew 98 um you know it, it yeah it has uh it has its moments um honestly though overall um it didn't really do it for me the best was obviously yet to come but there's some really cool songs on this uh born to lose is cool black uh black pearl is good uh Spoke in the Wheel is that's that Southern rock mellow acoustic thing. Uh, love that song. Um, otherwise, there's yeah, there's not a hell of a lot here. It lacks for me this record. It just lacks some of the catchier riffs and the cool arrangements that were coming, uh, you know, later on. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's still a, a decent album, you know, um, but it is number seven. So but yeah. Sonic Brew is my number seven. 
More on that later. Um, <clears throat> all right, my number seven. I'm going to go only because it's still fairly new. And, you know, a lot of times the more history you have with albums that kind of show depends on where it will wind up. So I'm going to go with Doom Crew from 2021, which I really like a lot. Yeah. Right? So, but it's just, I don't have as much time with this as I do with some of the others. Uh, it's his, their 11th album, uh, big, bright production on here vocals are a little cleaner in the mix i think on this sometimes on some of these albums his vocals are mixed really really weird um set you free really good song great chorus big riffs destroy and Con conquer is a typical black label society banger lots of groove big doom riffing blazing solos you got you made me want to live is a cool bluesy anthem oh, yeah. um, the uh, acoustic ballad forever in a day has some really nice vocals on it. I really like him singing on that one. Uh, Ruins, absolutely smokes. Big, heavy riffs. Forsaken is also great. Um, Gospel of Lies, again, it's got this Sabbathy thing going on. Probably my favorite song on the album. Uh, Shelter Me, Gather All My Sins, also good stoner you know, numbers at the back end of the album. Again, a really long album, a lot of songs. I really yeah. like this a lot. I think this one probably could have ranked higher if we would have done this six months from now a year from now probably would rank even higher because i think this is their strongest album in quite a while so um oh. that's my number seven so. yeah more on that later uh number six for me is stronger than death uh 2000 <clears throat> this has got probably my favorite black label society song on it 13 years of grief great song. is absolutely relentless yep. and heavy as you know what um i just man that i love that riff the whole the, it's just that's a fantastic fantastic song uh, i like rust a lot too it's a mellower song but it's a good mellow song counterfeit god is great love the squealies on that you know he's got squealies all the time going on oh, yeah. <laughs> that's just right um you know the title cut stronger to death is really cool it sounds like white that sounds like a white zombie tune um i think dracula or Dracula. What do they call that song? Dracula? Dracula? I don't know. Anyways, it sounds like it's a to it's a total white zombie sounding riff. Um, yeah, I think this is like one of his heaviest records. Um, it's very, very heavy, and it has a very dirgy Sabbath vibe to it. You know, that that album. And uh, that's a good record. Stronger Than Death. That's my number six. I mean, Tony's one of his heroes, right? Mr. Yeah, Tony. yeah. Not surprising. All right, my number six is uh, Grimmest Hits from 2018, 10th album. Another really strong album. I, I, I had a Doom Crew and this one were kind of flip-flopping for me because I, I like them both about the same. Uh, Trampled Down Below. Oh, God. Yeah. First song on the album, Bust Out of the Gate in a Big Way. Really, really great. Seasons of Falter. Uh, another really good one. The Betrayal. Good, catchy, you know, headbanging. Uh, only the only words is more that kind of southern rock thing that he does on each album pretty much room of nightmares is great uh disbelief is another sabbathy style number illusions of peace another good one bury your sorrow another good one really strong album it could even rank higher that's what i'm saying this for me the top seven are really really good in my opinion but grimmest hits i remember when that came out i was kind of like oh they're putting out a greatest hits collection that i'm playing. yeah like, wait a second I, I don't know any of these songs this is wait a minute yeah so uh, but really cool stuff. And, and again, pretty heavy album too, uh, which is good. So that's my number six, Grimmest Hits. See, for, like you're, for me, my top six are like, those are the strong ones for me. And those ones were flip-flopping right up until yesterday. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, well, that was your number six. That's my number five is Grimmest Hits. And as you were reading it off, it's like, yeah. Uh, Cause that's just, those are the songs that I, I, I wrote down in my notes here, trampled down below. What an amazing opener that is. Um, you know, more Sabbath vibe on seasons of falter. Uh, the, the criticism I would say for this record as is common to a lot of his records is it's a little too long, you know, nine or 10 songs. This would have been great. You know, there's a few songs on here that are just duds like, you know, uh, the day that heaven had uh, gone away, I would get rid of that. I do like the Jimi Hendrix C style playing on it, but the song itself is yeah. not great. Uh, the only words, all that one shine, you drop those songs and this becomes a much tighter, really cool record. Um, 
Others, the other track, the betrayal is great. Illusions of peace is great. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I just want to hear Zach belting it out over some killer riffs. That that's when he, for me, that's when, you know, that's the sound that I want to hear out of that. And that's what they do best. And for me, that's when they sound the best. And there's a fair bit of that on this record. So yeah, my number five is Grimmest Hits. My number five from 2002, their third album, 1919 Eternal. This is a pretty big album for them. Uh, third album, like I said, uh, I believe I saw them at Ozfest on this tour. I think, pretty sure it was this album. Uh, it's got Bleed For Me, which is a really great opener. I, you know, it's yeah. he, he dabbled a little bit on this album and the next one, a little bit of that the, the new metal thing, which was kind of kind of popular at the time. But it but it still had enough of the Zach personality, enough of the dirgy doomy type of thing. So I didn't really mind it too much. But man, believe for me is just absolutely awesome. Lords of Destruction kind of reminds me a little Pantera. It's kind of noisy but yeah. still really heavy. Demise of Sanity is absolutely terrific. Serious groove, pretty catchy. Uh, Bridge to Cross is another one of those melancholy, melodic songs. He's got, like I said, he's got one on every album. Battering Ram is terrific. Um, I like his little solo acoustic piece, Speedball. It's really good acoustic, yeah. there, you know. Uh, Genocide yeah. Junkies is a great stoner piece. Reminds me of, like it could have come off of Sabbath's Master of Reality. Uh, Refuse to Bow Down is really good. Um, you know, it's a, again, there's 14 songs on here. So there's a couple of kind of generic pieces, but the stuff that's good is really good. Um, yeah. I don't think the production is as lethal as the first two albums because the first two albums are so bone crunching heavy i think this is a little bit different but like i said some really really great songs on here so it's my number five 1919 cool cool so my number four you just held that up a minute ago doom crew incorporated their most recent that is a damn good record um okay. man i like that record set me free destroying concert uh conquer uh, you make me want to live, which is mellow and heavy, very Sabbath vibe on that. And this is like your, this is the typical Zach record. It has a slow dirges like Gospel of Lies. Uh, love the change when it picks up tempo, and has uh, you know, and, and it also has his mellow side on this. You know, forever in a day, love rain down, uh, farewell ballad. I generally uh, just read my notes here. Don't like his mellow. I generally don't like his mellow songs, but there are exceptions. Overall, there's enough good tracks on this, like some really, really good tracks. And I love the sound of this record as well. Yeah, it's very and, well produced. Yeah, it's 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 a solid sounding record. I mean, so that's that's one of those that you can just put on and you know, and and, and yeah, you can you can get right into it. And that's why it's up at number four. I, I really dig that record. I remember when it first came out, like Gospel of Lies is probably my favorite song on the album. That's got an amazing riff to it. And that's like one of those songs, like, like you're playing in the car and it plays, it finishes and you hit the repeat and you yeah. go right back and listen to it again. You go and listen to it again. I'm like, oh my God, I love this song. So good. Yeah, I'm glad you dig that. That's a really good album. Yeah, that's cool. My number four is from 2010, eighth album, Order of the Black. Again, as you can see, lots of songs, <laughs> lots yeah. of them. But really good. Uh, it kicks off with a, and another a, a amazing, amazing opener called Crazy Horse, which is just absolutely riftastic. So good. Overlord, another really, really great song on here. Uh, Parade of the Dead is big and fast and heavy. Uh, the drums are just as relentless on that song as the riffs are. Screaming guitar solo. Uh, Black Sunday starts off with a guitar solo and then kind of just crushes from there. Southern Disillusion cranks as well. Godspeed Hellbound. This is a raucous and heavy album start to finish. I absolutely love it. It's my number four, Order of the Black. Yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah. All right. Well, my number three, you just had up a minute ago, and that's uh, 1919 Eternal, 2002. Uh, some of my favorites on that record, Bleed for Me, Demise of Sanity, Bridge to Cross, uh, this one again has 14 songs. I could easily cut three or four songs to make this a more consistent record. Like Genocide Junkies, not a fan. America the Beautiful, refuse to bow, uh, bow down. You take those records, 
sold out and this is just an absolute zach riff fest just a great great record and uh yeah i love that record 1919 eternal Bleed for me, I bled yeah. for you. I ah, just love it. It's such a great, it's great. song. It's yeah. easily a top 10 favorite uh, Black Label Society song for me. All right. Number three, I'm going to go with 2003's The Blessed Hell Ride. This is a ripper. Yeah. Another pretty big seller for the band. You know, this is, I think, I think probably they were at the peak of their popularity right around this time fourth album really good production crisp songs only 11 uh and the guitar solos on this album are just rampagingly terrific yep. stoned and drunk so good doomsday <laughs> jesus man the drums and the riffs are just unrelenting um stillborn catchiest song in their whole catalog i think still yeah, is another yeah. one of those kind of like new metal bangers right that they were doing it just kind of fit in with what everybody else else was doing at the time uh you got ozzy guesting on that you know which is pretty yeah. cool uh suffering overdue it's doomy you got the acoustic title track final solution is good destruction overdrive dead meadow another one of his swampy piano ballads right you gotta have one on every album um you know probably a couple yeah you know there's only 11 songs in here but there's probably like three really mellow songs on there take one of them out put another banger in this this could you know be a top one or two for me but uh and i think his vocals sound really confident on this album whereas you know the first couple albums he's still trying to figure it out but uh but yeah this is really good blessed hell right number three yeah that's a good one um my number two you just had up a minute ago is order of the black 2010 yeah that's a that's a great album that is very i that's a really consistent record uh lots of good up to up tempo rockers uh and then there's some mellow ones in there sprinkled throughout uh again 14 songs a little bit long it would be better if you knocked off at least two songs for me it would be time waits for no one it's a little cheesy a little too much elton john cheese on that darkest days not a fan couple too many slow songs here but uh otherwise that's a fantastic rocking is, black yeah. label society album that's a good record it is Love that record. all right uh i had a hard time with my number one and two um i, I kind of talked about it at the beginning of the show and i talk about it all the time sometimes when you have like a long history with certain albums they tend to stay your favorites so I've been listening to these guys since they first came on the scene. So I have a strong connection to the first two albums. So which one do I pick for one? Which one do I pick for two? Right. Uh, I ultimately went with uh, Sonic Brew from 99 as my number two. Uh, I, I just love how heavy these two albums are. These two albums is just nonstop riffage constantly. I mean, and I love the guitar tone on these albums. Uh, you know, Bored to Tears, Rules, Rose Petal Garden, Hey You, Dark, Heavy, Big Riffs, Screaming Pinch Harmonics, Everywhere You Turn. Uh, you know, Zach kind of sounds like on these first two albums, like a redneck Ozzy Osbourne you know, on the vocals. And because he's like I said, he's, I think he gets more confident on albums like this. So he's just still trying to figure out how to sing on these first two. But uh, man, you know, title track is great. Peddlers of Death got piano and big doom riffs. Uh, Mother Mary is great. Yeah, it's a good down. Uh, yeah, yeah there's so many great things world of trouble i mean just so many great songs i just i love the heaviness of these first two albums they're just absolutely crushing and they're probably the doomiest i think out of all of his albums which is not surprising because i think initially that was kind of what he was going for and then he started doing other things starting in the third album and on but yeah sonic brew from 99 the debut is my number two it's funny you mentioned that see i because my number one is the is the album that got me listening to black label society so i came on a little bit later and when i'm listening to the rest of the catalog it's like is this better than my is this better and you know what uh no nah, this is i still think this is the best album he ever did and it's blessed hayride yeah um it's just everything comes together with that record. It's the, definitely the best collection of songs. I mean, Stone and Drunk, Stillborn, yeah. Funeral Bell, Destruction, Overdrive. Like, that's it. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. I'll pay the check. And all. I mean, come on. That, that's just amazing freaking riffage. His riffs were killer. They were, they were hooky as hell. Just really, really good songs. 
you know, lots of up-tempo rockers. And that's what I want to hear them doing, like some really good riffs and some up-tempo stuff. You know, the title cut, even, you know, it, it, for a mellow tune, it's one of their better mellow tunes. Yeah, it's really good. Yep. You know, I, I mean, there's a few songs, again, like every record that I could do without. I'm not a big fan of Dead Metal or uh, Black and Waters. But uh, for the most part, there's more good tunes, better riffs. And just a better variety in the songs on this, and uh, than his other albums, and yeah, I mean, it, it, mo- yeah, it's it just, it's just the most consistent record, you know. It, it's like that for me. That's the record where they're doing the best, they're doing what they do best, right? Which is like those four songs that I just named. I mean, just yeah, it's killer. Uh, Blessed Hey Ride, number one for sure. Hell Ride. <laughs> Yeah, or hell, did I say hey, right? Yeah, oh. <laughs> you're into fall already, man. You're ready to go out on that hay ride and go pick some pumpkins, right? Uh, you know what? I was sitting outside today. I'm like, I mean, we got today. We had a warm day, right? And and tomorrow's going to be warm as well, right? So I'm sitting outside having my cigar, and I'm looking on my watch, and the sun's going down, and it's not even like six thirty, and I'm like, damn, yep, you're there already, man, dude. We're there. Oh, uh, it's uh. <laughs> All right, my number one, no surprise, is uh, from 2000, their second album, Stronger Than Death. Um, yeah. Man, this album cranks. This album cranks. Phony smiles, fake hellos, massive riffs. Um, 13 Years of Grief. Oh, oh, my God. So much bottom end on that, right? Just oh. amazing. Rust is just chilling. Oh, Super yeah. terrorizer, just smokes. Love those like pick rakes that he does, man. Just very, very cool. Uh, yeah. Counterfeit God is awesome. Uh, title track is so heavy, and that wah wah solo, man. Uh, love rain down, another doom smoker. I mean, this is just a brutal riffathon from start to finish, just so good. And uh, that's my number, number one, stronger than death. Cool. I do want to, uh, I know he's got, I think they have a couple live albums, but uh, Alcohol Fueled Brutality Live plus five is, uh, I have this, this is pretty cool for those of you who want to hear uh, him doing, or them, I should not just him, he's got a whole band there uh, doing their stuff live on stage. There's also like some DVDs and Blu-rays available, but uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, really good band. Um, it's like, one. It's Black Label Side is like one of those bands that I always really like because I always really appreciate him and I, i've liked what he's done with ozzy and uh, i i don't know though if black label society has ever like it's like they've they reached a certain point and that was kind of as far as they got yeah and I, they still go out and do it and they still pump out really strong albums and uh but i just i think that their kind of their time in the spotlight was probably about you know 2003 to 2006 or seven you know that was yeah that was their apex i mean this record blessed uh hell ride was their uh apex you know i mean uh but yeah they're still out there and but you know like i mean look at the the most recent record it's killer it's killer the strongest one in years yeah i totally oh, but, yeah. i mean they finally came out of that funk you know but yeah but i mean you know the way things are now like who's gonna hear it unless you're a real black label fan right you know what I mean? It's not going to get it played on the radio, you know? So. No, no. Although there's <clears throat> quite frankly, there's songs on that album that I think should be played on the radio as opposed to some stuff that is played on the radio, but that's a, that's a story for another oh, day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there you have it, everybody uh, ranking the albums of black label society, a uh, very, very cool stoner rock metal doom like a rock southern rock band whatever they're, they're not from the south but uh, uh they play this really cool form of heavy music i guess we'll just call it that heavy rock um metal whatever um 11 albums so if you are a fan rank them as you like them in the comments below maybe if you're only familiar with a few rank the ones you like maybe your top five hey whatever you're free to do whatever you want and down in the comments so uh let's get it up for some black label society discussion down there and uh hack what's going on in your channel uh, over the next couple of weeks got anything cooking over there well this is airing on sunday right yes okay so on friday so two days before this but you can watch it on the replay i am interviewing philip shows who's with accept and they are in a current currently touring north america and he graciously uh 
this, you know, agreed to show up on the channel and we're going to do an interview uh, uh, Friday. And in a, and then I've got a cover band show. I'm doing a, a show once a month. Uh, the next episode airs October the 12th, where my brother and I were both been cover bands for years. And we just talk about being in a cover band and, you know, the, the, the trials and tribulations and so on. So we did what for his first episode last month. We'll do that once a month. And then at the end of the month, you and I and Martin are going to, and, and this, this is, this is totally by fluke. I have Philip shows from except on friday and we're doing the except top five albums at the end of the month and i swear i didn't plan that i'm not that intelligent okay it just kind of happened it right? worked out that way right it's kind of worked out that way so yeah so it's going to be the except month uh on the hack channel so, cool. so check it out yes yeah, so everybody go over to guitar hack uh, check out his channel and please hit that subscribe button and help out hack get those numbers way way up right we're going to keep growing helping him grow that channel so uh appreciate it check it out and uh yeah martin and i are on uh, guitar hack once a month usually towards the end of the month where we do like a little uh album ranking type of thing so that's always fun and uh so we'll see hack in a couple weeks over there and uh visit us here on the web at www.catranquility.org we're on facebook we're on YouTube all together, all the damn time. What do we got coming up tomorrow? Hudson Valley Squares, of course, Monday tomorrow. We've got, uh, we're going to do another uh, favorite albums by year episode. We're going to be looking at our favorite five hard rock and metal albums from 1981, which is a loaded year for crime. Yep. So that's coming up tomorrow night. And then, of course, all the usual suspects during the rest of the week uh, in the prog seat Tuesday, Wednesday, new album review day, Thursday, the Monsters Den, and Friday will be uh, Martin and myself once again at the Fun House, and then uh, the UK Connection on Saturday, and then back here once again for ranking the albums on Sunday. I don't even know what's coming next Sunday. That will be determined this week. I think, uh, I don't know, got a couple things in the works, so we'll see what happens. But uh, anyway... Please uh, subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell. We also have the links below in the uh, al in the album description, in the video description for our Ko-Fi page for channel donations, as well as our merch page where you can get all sorts of cool SOT related stuff. And uh, we'll see you real soon for Guitar Hack. I am Pete Pardo. Have a good one, everybody. Go Black Label Society. See you. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers.